Um, yeah, I'll put my phone on, do not disturb. I don't know, but I've got one friend in my life that still like likes to use the phone. I don't know Ooh. anyone. I know. And I, it's just something I grudge it. I just grudge it. Yeah. I grudge answering the phone these days. It's just Maybe if someone like. phones me, I just I want to like have it so that I know exactly when it's coming. Mm-hmm. But a phone call out of the blue is fucking wild at this day. Oh, age. it's mad. And you'll probably mm-hmm. listen to this eventually, Damien. If you hear this, fuck you. <laughs> Again, I always like do these bits at the beginning. I don't know if I'll keep them in. We'll see how that mm-hmm. go- we'll see how that goes. Um, this is going to be a happy New Year episode of the Brown Jewels. Everyone tuning in, happy New Year to you. I hope it was a bloody nice time. If you're in Scotland, I hope you had a nice Hogmanay. Uh, I didn't. I don't fucking believe in celebrating it. It's a big pile of shit. Uh, I, I don't know why I keep looking into this camera here on the left. <laughs> <laughs> it's just me in the studio today. There's no guest. Uh, it's me and Coben. Uh, Coben is the guest for today. So Coben will be joining in from time to time. We're going to be talking about things. Uh, I I cannot stand Hogmanay or New Year celebrations. I genuinely, it's the worst thing. It's the worst day of the year for me. And all my life, I've forced myself to go and celebrate it. And then last year, so the end of 2021, going into 2022, I was just like, I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm not going to do it anymore. And I stayed in last year and did nothing. And it was the best new year of my life. Really? Okay. <laughs> well, I think that's because I'm an old man who just fucking hates any kind of joy in the world. Ah, fair enough. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not into it. So I did the same again this year. Um, and also, controversial opinion. I don't know if this is it's probably not controversial at all. I hate fireworks. They're mid. Fireworks are mid. They're just loud. It's just pointless. I don't like fireworks. See, if you've seen one firework display, you've seen them all. Oh, you've yeah. seen them all. I just like mm-hmm. you know, you're going to put it to music. Yeah. Oh, gonna, oh it's now gonna, it's going to go in a line. And oh, they're going to go. Let me guess. You're going to save a big fucking explosion for the end. <laughs> you've seen one. You've seen them all. Don't do it. Uh, but I, what I do love is, have you seen these? These these ah oh, these make my heart warm. <laughs> is when the firework displays go wrong and all the fireworks go off at the one oh, time. Oh yeah. Oh, it happened in San Francisco a while ago, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I, oh, best fireworks ever. I love them because everyone. It looks like it's the end of the world and everyone is shit in their pants. But just when they all blow up at the same time, or even better, in fact, this is. In fact, we probably need to look if then uh, there were any fatalities in this. But there was a firework factory that exploded, and it was fucking brilliant. And I, I, I loved it. I think there might have been a lot of people killed in that, so I don't know. If <laughs> Maybe save the word brilliant for when we <laughs> learned that everything was fine. But again, it ties... 35 in. people died, but you know... <laughs> it was pretty Shit. fucking cool. Okay. okay, right. Well, maybe... Right, well, that's sad. Uh, what, what year was that? Uh, well, so far it looks like there's a... a it's happened more than a few times. Oh, there was a big one in 2020, wasn't there? Yeah. Yeah, in Beirut. Oh, shit, that? Yeah. Oh, my God. I don't think that was a firework factory. I think that was, like, uh, uh, some kind of, like, yeah. chemical storage plant that blew up. Uh, I Honestly, that that was a really, like, obviously tragic thing. But that, mm-hmm. I, I watched that video hundreds of times. Oh, yeah. That was mind-blowing mm-hmm. to see an explosion of that size. Oh yeah, it's it's absolutely insane. It was uh, fifteen tons of fireworks, jugs of kerosene, and acid. Yeesh. But not like I'd assume not like like acid, the kind you trip on. Like yeah, like, I mean that would be stuff. everyone in Beirut just tripping balls for the next few weeks. That oh, would have yeah. been wild. No, I think mm-hmm. the kind of ones that I'm talking about don't have fatalities <laughs> on a double digit scale, um, and it's more just it's like a nice wee fun thing to just watch them all blow up at the same time. Mm-hmm. I think that should happen. I would I, if I went. If I got invited to a fireworks show like that, I would go in a heartbeat. Mm-hmm. You're going to tell me everything's going to blow up right now. I'll go, I'll fucking in. I'm in. Firework displays, leave them in the past. We're yeah. done with them. What we need to do more of is drone shows. Those big Ooh, yeah. lights in the sky, just get in. Some of them, I think the ones they do in China. I think it's China. And it, oh my God. It's just, it's so impressive. It's so impressive to watch. Mm-hmm. Like the choreograph, the like that's what we're talking about. That's what we get. No more drone, no more fireworks, only drone shows from here on in. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't think, I can only imagine the Edinburgh Council version of a drone show would be, oh, be absolutely miserable. Oh, yeah. It would be mm-hmm. so depressing just to see, they'd have like three drones 
and they'd just be like, Doing, oh, the, we're going to get the Scottish flag up in the sky. Oh, that'd be mm. pathetic. The Scottish flag doesn't even have enough colors to make it worthwhile. Exactly. Oh, that one's... Up. It's white. That's just a, oh, yeah, that's just a t- normal cutler. Well, it's going to turn blue now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't think Scotland is ready for drone shows. So I think we'll probably just have to stick with fireworks displays for now. Oh. Um, so this is, I mean, I mean what were we, what was I going to talk about this podcast? Oh, yeah, this podcast was going to be all about the new year. I hope you had a good one. I hope you had a better one than me. I think if you like enjoying New Year, fucking go for it. Uh, it's not, I'm, I'll never be a fan of it. Are you quite a big, uh, a motivated person and like, plant like resolutions type guy uh for years i was the kind of person who was like i'm gonna set resolutions and then like six hours in i'm like ah shit i'm drinking already yeah i think i i I think i've known myself for long enough that i'm just a fucking quitter and i know Mm -hmm. there's no point even me doing resolutions like i used to try and even attempt them and it would just get yeah, I'm just I'm just not the type of guy. I can't find myself to motivate, especially in January. Who wants to motivate yourself to do anything in January other than stay in and eat pizza? That's the only thing that has to happen in January, mm-hmm. and I will stand by that. Oh yeah. Although saying yeah. that, this is so. I think everyone always you kind of do the kind of join the gym thing. This is in December, uh, Edinburgh Council, uh, who own. They've got like all the gyms in Edinburgh. Mm-hmm. They've got this thing called Edinburgh Leisure. They sent out an email, and it was called the Twelve Days of Christmas, and it was for twelve pounds. You could use all their gym facilities as much as you wanted for twelve days, right? And that email came in, and there was a time in December where I actually convinced myself, a person who's not gone to the gym in over seven or eight years and can't exercise get out of breath walking up a flight of stairs i convinced myself i was going to go to the gym 12 <laughs> days in a row <laughs> i actually looked at that email came through and i went i'm gonna fucking do this mm. i'm actually gonna do this i'm gonna better myself and i'm gonna go to the gym 12 days in a row which would kill me if i went to the gym three days in a row i would be in a body bag after like the fucking oh, be, yeah. they'd have to carry me out of Portobello Baths gym <laughs> surrounded by just little other little gimps who have tried to like better themselves in January and I would just be carried out and I, I would be a corpse I would be a January corpse what better way to start the year than dying and it just wouldn't happen and I, I, I convinced myself I, there was like climbing walls I was like I'm gonna, gonna like climb walls mm-hmm. yeah. that's not that's not Coben we've not known each other that long that's not me I think I've done entire podcast episodes dedicated to how unfit I am yeah, yeah. there was me and why was I delu- so deluded in December? I think I think that's when I like I'm not I know myself in January. I know what I'm like. I'm a slob. I'm a slug. I'm just a fat mm. fuck that just doesn't do anything. <laughs> but in Jan- honestly, in December, I was just like, no, I'm gonna fucking be someone. And do you know what I did instead? I actually went to sign up to it one day, and and instead of that, you know, when you open the internet and you're gonna go to be like, oh, I'm gonna do this, and you open your phone mm. and then you end up doing like five other different things before you get to the thing you want to do yeah i opened my phone to sign up for the 12 days of christmas and instead <laughs> i ended up on facebook i ended up seeing an advert for the calzone kitchen which is a meal delivery service that delivers frozen calzone direct through your letterbox and instead of joining up for a gym membership i signed up for a membership for the calzone kitchen and i have never felt better about myself in my life you know what if it makes you feel better if I was in that situation, making that same decision 10 out of 10 times. Oh. You ever had a calzone? Amazing. You ever felt shitty after the gin? Terrible. Not yeah. good. Not good. I think a calzone is probably my favorite meal. It's in top three meals of all time. Oh, yeah. A good calzone? Mm. God tier stuff. So in my head, that's where, that's, the more, that's where the realism felt in my life, is that will I go to the gym or will I order eight frozen calzones to get poked through my letterbox. Apparently, they come through my letterbox. Eight frozen calzones in January, which, I mean, that's more of a fucking... That, that, that's the kind of January I'm after. Um, so that's exactly what I did. I signed up for the calzone kitchen. Didn't look into it, Coburn. I didn't look into the calzone kitchen. I saw the website. I did that. Signed up for it. I've paid the money. I, don't, I think they're actually late. I think they were meant to be there yesterday. And... 
on the way here today, I looked into reviews of the Calzone kitchen. <laughs> Gobin, they're not good. They're not good at all. Oh, yikes. I have got some reviews here of the Calzone kitchen. <laughs> this is this person. This, this literally could be me from the future. When I first saw pictures of the Calzones, I was memor memorized, mesmerized with how delicious they looked. A thin dough wrapped around delicious fillings which oozed out of the wrap. Yeah, here we go. But the box wasn't as cold as it would... Well, that doesn't even make sense. Worst to come was the calzones. Well, of course, that's the only thing that can still come. Yeah. Thick, chewy dough wrapped around the most meagre of fillings. Nothing at all like the pictures that I'd seen previously. Just chewy cheese and dough. I feel as though I've just seen a lead balloon, <laughs> which is sitting very heavily on my stomach, despite stripping back some of the dough. I have chucked away the other two calzones never, ever again. Didn't think that much of the garlic mayo either. <laughs> I like the addition of just like, and fuck the garlic mayo. Yeah, fuck, fuck your garlic mayo. As if you've not twisted the knife into this poor people's mm. kitchen. In fact, they're probably not poor people. They're probably rich because they keep mugging me off mm. and other people like me. And <laughs> that's it. That, these are the reviews, the first reviews I saw when I went looking for them. This is why like, I need to start learning from mistakes of ordering things on the internet, which never will happen. The next yep. one, I think that's pretty much roughly the kind of same vibe. Unfortunately, the quality of the product... Oh, these were all one-star reviews, oh, by the way. okay, excellent. Before I go over any further, these were all <laughs> one-star reviews. Unfortunately, the quality of the product appears to have suffered since we first discovered the company online. Our third order has been so bad that we have thrown away tonight's dinner and we'll be throwing away the last packet we have left in the freezer. Our first two orders were a lovely quality product, but this time the dough appears to be much thicker and the filling much less. <laughs> we ordered the Great 8, which was one of the ones I ordered as well, and tonight was our third attempt to cook the calzones. But despite adding an extra five minutes in the oven, the dough was still uncooked inside, brackets burnt on the outside, and there was so little filling in that the calzone was effectively empty by the time the cheese had melted out of both ends. Regretfully, I will not be ordering again. Oh. Like, I don't think you have to get to the end of a review like that and just like give it a kind of little summary. Being like, I will not. We, we got that. Mm -hmm. I think... So Someone else just kind of just went, fuck, no fucking about. This is my kind of review. Very disappointed. More like wraps. Very hard pizza. Very salty. Sadly, it won't be ordering again. <laughs> yeah. I, I love I love the end of reviews when people are like, they're like, one star. Here are all the reasons it sucked. I won't be getting it again. You're yeah. like, you're on just like, you're on the edge of your seat going, but are they, are they going to do it again? <laughs> what are they going to do? They hate, they hate it so much. Are they going to roll the dice? I know. Like, like I've had pizzas delivered to my door before and mm -hmm. do you know the annoying thing is is that the, i used to get a calzone delivered and then the place shut down oh. the place shut down and then one of these little shitty places on delivery opened up and it's a, like a dog shit chippy oh. in like a really shit part of edinburgh has renamed themselves i don't know if you've seen this on delivery they'll give themselves like alternative names to fool you into ordering from them on delivery and i see through it so quickly now whereas before I would have gone mm. oh my god there's a place called the Calzone like shack on Deliveroo and then you look at the address mm. you google the address and it's just a shit place yeah I think it was Frankie and Benny's call themselves something different on Deliveroo mm -hmm. and I don't know if you've ever been, had the pleasure of eating the Frankie Benny's Frankie nope. and Benny's is shit it yeah. is like it's not even food it's like I, like a Chicago town pizza would be better than that it's yeah. not food whatsoever yet they rename themselves i think they call them like like snacks or shacks or something mm -hmm. like that and i fell for it once and i just never fucking again am i oh, falling ever. for this yeah so yeah there was my first attempt first and only attempt at trying to be motivated as i move into 2023 instead of signing up for the gym for 12 days continuously that's wild that i even thought that was going to be possible i then signed up for a one-star calzone delivery service so i've Still better than the gym. I'm going to be... I'll, I will keep the listeners posted on when these calzones arrive, just how bad they are as well. I don't have high hopes of them, to yeah. be brutally honest. How, how do you feel about artichokes on, like, ritzy pizza? Not good. Fair enough, fair enough. Are you an artichoke man? I, I like artichokes. The bumping. I am honestly... My, my diet is, like... It's... Bad. Bad. <laughs> it's a lot of mm -hmm. meat. There's just yeah. not there's not a lot of vegetables in my life. I try and like have some. I'll still like go to McDonald's. I'll get all like the I, I know some people are rolling their eyes out there right now. As you hear me say this, I'll go to McDonald's and ask for a plain burger. 
still have oh. like the cheese in it and everything like that but get the vegetables out of my burger that should be the default i should have to ask for the vegetables to go in like, up until maybe about five years ago i had no vegetables in my life like no <laughs> vegetables whatsoever the most stereotypical scottish person ever no veg at all and it's only when I went, I think I went on a holiday to some like Thailand or something like that. And I, was, and I realized, oh, I have to eat vegetables. And then that was it. From then on in, I like some. Yeah, okay. But um, if you hadn't told me that, I probably could have guessed that about you. <laughs> but I feel you. I feel you. <laughs> Periodically, I'll just be, I'll, I'll like be in Tesco or somewhere. I'll just be looking up and down the aisles. And I'm like, you know what I should do? I should eat an entire cucumber. Not, oh, not like not good. like in one go. Like good. I'll cut it up and shit. God, but I'll horrible. just I'll just eat it and I'll be like, there you go, done for two weeks. Oh, Corbin, that is it doesn't feel good. I can't get my head around eating any cucumber, let alone an entire cucumber. Hmm. To some, I've got some red lines in my diet: lettuce, cucumber, most vegetables. To be fair, <laughs> are the red lines. I'm getting better. I always tell people, oh, I like eating rocket. That's the one, and people were like, "Oh, that's a fucking What's like, rocket? leap into the rockets." Rockets just like leafy salads. Ah, okay, gotcha, gotcha. It's the most basic. There's nothing to it, and I'm like, "But I like rocket," and everyone, I like expecting everyone to go, "Wow, you're so healthy." Should I should I try and change my diet this year? Let's have a let's have a think. Let's have a ten second think on whether I should change my diet this year. No, good no, call. no, I'm not going to change my diet. Uh, I'm not going to join the gym. I'm not going to do anything ridiculous like that. Uh, the one thing I do want to actually, and I think this kind of like pretty much rules my life, is, and again, this podcast will never ever try and motivate anyone into doing anything. I am not that, this is not this kind of podcast. But I put a lot of time and effort into trying to get a bit of sleep. Like the amount <laughs> of time, that it, my whole day from the second I get up, to the second I go to bed, it's oh, my whole day revolves around going to like better sleep. Mm. So I think I've been looking at. Well, I actually tried to listen to like a guy talking about a, a sleep podcast, and the guy was so fucking boring. <laughs> I fell asleep listening to this guy's podcast in the middle of the afternoon, mm. not even at night time. I fell asleep during this guy's sleep talk on sleep, and my god, this guy—he's the source. <laughs> he's the way to get people to sleep. Just boring fucking people talking about it. But I did listen to a few things he's talked about. And apparently, and here is some, again, these few and far between these moments on this podcast, but we're going to learn something today. This person uh, talks about the best thing you can do. Um, oh, fuck, that's not even sleep related. It's when you get up. Apparently, when you get up, you need to like run outside and get like 10 minutes of natural daylight. And then that make you feel awake. You're also meant to exercise as soon as you get up. And okay. I just think, no, no, I'm not doing that. Mm -hmm. That's the minute, and then that again is meant to help you sleep at night. I think. Mm -hmm. So what they have said, and again, this is my shortcut for everything. Mm -hmm. I think if I, if I could just have shortcuts for everything in life, I would take them. Uh, so this guy's like, or if you want to get a better night's sleep, take magnesium. Apparently, magnesium. Mm -hmm. This shit's wild. Yeah. I'm, I'm like, I didn't know about this. But people need to eat mag eat, eat magnesium. I'm saying that like it's gonna get yeah. fucking delivered through your door. Mm -hmm. People need to eat magnesium, and then that will make you sleep better. Yeah. Did, have you heard about this? I yeah. I've um, always just gone, or I could get off my phone and I just ignore it. Well, that's what he did. That, he did say that. Mm -hmm. He was just like, get off your phone. But apparently, if you have a magnesium, then that's my that's my thing. I would just take my dr take the drugs way out of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I've I've ordered like loads of magnesium. <laughs> And I've had to like sit through, this is how excited my Christmas break was. I was spent loads of time researching which are the best magnesium tablets for, but I have now ordered shit ton of magnesium <laughs> tablets. So that is my goal. This is my only resolution for this year is to take loads of drugs to help me sleep better. Mm -hmm. And I should probably say, if anyone's got any tips for how you get to sleep, let me know. Because I'm so sick of listening to podcasts to fall asleep too. That is not good for my health. So if you've got any tips, and it, it can be drugs, it can be drugs. Although, if you take, if you tell me to take edibles, I'm not going to listen to that. Yeah, no, that's insane. Have you heard of heroin? Heroin. I have heard of heroin. <laughs> it's a very Scottish way of getting to sleep. Yeah. 
Um, have you ever heard of? Uh, I'm, I'm just full of random facts. There's a there's a way that the U.S. military teaches people to go to sleep. And first yeah. off, fuck fuck the military. No, no, they've done a lot of good things, Corbin. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, the Amer- the American military. <laughs> fuck it. Um, pro, we're pro military on this podcast. <laughs> What they, they tell you to do is lay on your back, stretch out all of your muscles, like tips of the toes, right out to the end of the fingers, relax every single muscle you can, Yeah. lay on your back, and then what you do is like, if you were to picture a pound coin sitting in the middle of your forehead, Yeah. and then you just, like, even pressing there helps, and then you just let all of the muscles on your face relax from that point out, and yeah. you just count backwards from 100, works every time. No fucking way. That's, that's how I get to sleep, and it's... it's do you actually do this? Yeah, it's fucking life-changing. Like, you learn that, and you're like... It's been this easy the whole time. Oh my god! It's mental. Well, I'm trying that tonight. Oh yeah, it's the drugs don't arrive for a few days. So yeah. I'm gonna have to. We're gonna have to do this. Mm-hmm. See, I swear, see if I've just spent about fifty quid on drugs, yeah. and I could have just taken this tip and just put, pretend, pretend there's a pound coin. Pound, 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 dot. Yeah. If I could just pretend there's a pound <laughs> coin in my forehead, and that'll get me to mm-hmm. sleep. I'm gonna fucking send all these drugs back, man. Yeah, fuck them. There's a there's a drug in Canada which I can't remember what it's called right now, but it's prescription only out here. But in Canada, you just buy it over the shelf. Sweet. And it's amazing. Like it just, all it really does is it makes like once you're asleep, it's the deepest sleep you've ever had. But so what's the one? What's the Canadian drug? Uh, melatonin. Yes. Amazing. You meant to take that because that's like part of what the sun gives you, mm-hmm. and that helps yeah. you get to sleep. Yeah, pretty much. And it's it's wild because in Canada you can get like giant tubs of it, but then out here, like when I moved here, everyone's like, yo to get over jet lag just use melatonin to help reset your sleep schedule i was like great and i got here prescription only couldn't get it it's so it weird terrible time. it's so bizarre that like some countries they, they've got different rules about this mm-hmm. i think it wasn't i think it was that maybe in that same holiday in thailand like years ago um i can't remember if i've told this story in the podcast for it. fuck it if i have i'll have yeah, go for it. um so over there you can buy diazepam Oh, which is Valium. Yeah. You can buy that in like the hundreds mm. and it costs like a couple pound. Yeah. So I would, and again, I was a bad sleeper back then. So I just bought shit loads of Valium, like mm-hmm. a lot of Valium. And I think it wasn't even like a box. This guy, I just found this guy on the street. Mm-hmm. I bought a bag of Valium off this guy. <laughs> um, I think I bought the, I bought a few over the counter ones, but I found this guy and he just sold me a bag of Valium. Mm-hmm. And it was fucking brilliant. I am... Um, and then I was staying in a hostel and I would just get shit faced every night in the hostel and yeah. start giving out the Valium. <laughs> I would literally just hand out the Valium all the time. Um, and then oh, I think I'd maybe been staying in this hostel for like three, four days and it got someone, a new person like joined the hostel and I was talking to them and they were like, Oh, you're from Scotland. Oh, cool. Mm. Have you met the Scottish drug dealer that stays at this hostel? And I was like, Oh, there's a fucking Scottish drug dealer at this hostel. I was like, That's fucking hilarious. I can't believe that there's a guy here. I've not met him. Turns out I was the fucking Scottish <laughs> drug dealer. <laughs> and I was just handing out value, and everyone just was. Everyone just thought I was a really bad drug dealer because I wasn't taking any money for it. I gave it to this one. I, like my my room at night. There was like there was a, a dorm of like six of us, and I would just give everyone a Valium before I went to sleep. And this one day, this girl, I think she was from like Germany or something like that, and it got to like one in the afternoon, mm-hmm. and people were coming down to like the common room bit and going, "Hey, by the way, she's not, she's not moved, she's not moved, she's still like fucking like fast asleep." And I was like, "Oh my god, I fucking killed this fucking poor girl." And I was just like, oh shit, I need to go and like try and wake her up. Hmm. Went to wake her up and she just went, what the fuck are you doing? I'm like sleeping, I'm just a lazy bastard. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, that is the better outcome that you're just a lazy piece of shit. I just genuinely thought I'd killed this girl. And oh, everyone, man. and I, I, in my head, I was just like playing it out, you know, like led mm. down the court, like like in the handcuffs in a, in a Thai jail. Oh my God, I would have been fucking ripped apart in a Thai jail. Oh yeah. <laughs> I did a stupid bit. I'll tell you this bit. Um, I did this bit about how January birthdays. This is one of the very first bits. Maybe did like in the year two about people born in January just mm-hmm. must hate having a birthday like that, and the January babies are all just like really like must be depressed. Don't get to celebrate the birthday. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was just like, oh, here's here's a way we need to have less January birthdays. 
we need to raise awareness about the dangers of unprotected sex in April, because that's what happens nine months mm -hmm. after that. Yeah. And that, Coben, is year two of me doing comedy. And that was a fucking... That bit used to bomb. Oh, yeah, I, I can see it. Yeah, that bit used to eat shit. And I used to think, this is so clever. Do you have a bit that you remember from like the early years where you're like, don't know why I did that all the time? <sighs> I mean, that was pro that's definitely one of them. I used to try that one loads. I used to try a bit about how I worked a newspaper, and I did, genuinely did work at a newspaper, mm -hmm. and one of the, you used to get loads of calls in. If you work at a newspaper, mm -hmm. just think of all the local people that used to phone into a newspaper. Yeah. Mad people used to phone into newspapers all the mm -hmm. time. And one of the bits I used to keep on trying, which never worked, and was 100% a true story, yeah. is that a guy once phoned in and complained about a picture that the newspaper had used of him in the story. And he basically said that the picture was very unflattering. <laughs> the person was a paedophile. <laughs> a paedophile phoned in to complain about the picture. Like, not, he didn't complain about the facts of the story. Yeah. He complained that the picture used him, made him just a bit fucking, like, a bit ugly. And he used the term unflattering. Well, then let me just go with this bit, because I, I wrote down all the facts about this. Like, the picture's unflattering, but you know what's more unflattering? The article beside it. Yeah, yeah. and that was it. He, ne he never, he didn't, mm. he didn't dispute the story was true. <laughs> and I thought, that's fucking hilarious. A paedophile complaining about a picture, and he used to do this bit on stage, and... People just look at me like, that's not funny, man. And that's yeah. the one bit I'm just like, why is this not working? Mm -hmm. And I don't think it is that fun. I think it's a, kind of just a quite a funny story to tell people, but on stage, mm -hmm. it never really had any place in the set. And yeah, it just used to eat shit week after week mm -hmm. after week. But it was the one thing I just kept thinking, oh, that is quite funny. I should maybe stand by that. And mm -hmm. then eventually it gets to a point where, we, where it's bombed for like six weeks in a row and you go, do you know what? This is not going to work. Oh, you know, he said it was an unattractive photo of me. That's what he said. He said it's unflattering and it's unattractive. He offered to come in to he offered to come in and bring a series of headshots into reception, so that people we could the next time he's in the next time <laughs> the paedophile goes the next time I'm in the paper use one of these headshots and offer to bring in photos and a box of chocolates to sweeten the deal. Okay, uh, lot, yeah. to, lot to unpack there. Lot to unpack there. Uh, first off, that's probably not the first time he's used chocolates to sweeten the deal. <laughs> Corbin nailed it, mate. Absolutely nailed it. <laughs> Fucking whoa! Uh, it's just, I mean, I just like a narcissistic pedophile. Mm -hmm. But also, the lack of shame in that. I know. Yeah. Ooh. I know. Yeah. Horrible, horrible man. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that that was a bit that just did not work, and I think to this day it never will work. But it makes, mm -hmm. I think it just makes for quite a funny story. Yeah. So I've been looking into predictions for this year. Yes. Did you know that Nostradamus like made predictions up until like beyond this? Oh, Nost yeah. Nostradamus has made predictions for the next hundred years or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, he has made some wild predictions for Ooh. this year. But Nostradamus said that the Antichrist is going to come back this year. Yeah. Um, he's going to. Pre he predicts that the seas are going to boil. He's not far off, but that's, that's pretty close, actually. Um, he says that there's going to be a celest celestial fire on the royal edifice. And now, if you're stupid like me and didn't know what the word edifice meant, it just means a building. So a royal building is going to catch fire this year. Ah. So, and what a lot of people say is that you kind of have to just kind of interpret Nostradamus. Mm -hmm. Because he says he, he, I looked in it. They said he, he's got things right in the past. I'm yeah. um, looking at, you know, it's like it's just open to interpretation. Mm -hmm. So this website says this could literally mean a meteor is headed straight for Buckingham Palace, <laughs> burning down the house, if you will, or on a more metaphorical tip, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, who have just released a Netflix documentary, will bring down the, the royal family metaphorically in a fire. And I'm just like, yeah. I don't think that's what Nostradamus meant. No. When he was doing all this, I don't mm. think he would ever be like, oh yeah, no, that's, yeah, someone's going to release a Netflix documentary in 2023. I do mm. not think that is up there with what he can predict. Yeah. I mean, how many things did he predict that didn't come true though? Ex well, apparently, mm. he got 70% of things right, which is bullshit. 
that's because yeah. I, I looked on a, on, a, on a website and I just said like, he got like the great fire of London right apparently he got Hitler right uh, Trump 9-11 big ones I mean he got yeah. some big ones if you oh, get, yeah. if you get some big mm. ones but we need to look at the, the ones mm. he didn't get right um, but one of the ones he said this year no joke the 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 rising price of food could lead to cannibalism and this was his what he wrote so the high mm. price of wheat so high the price of wheat that man is stirred his fellow man to eat in his despair that's how if you're sitting there feeling mm. confident you know 2023 is going to be the one yeah Nostradamus <laughs> thinks we're going to be fucking cannibals by the end of the year and also by the way yeah. fair play for him mm -hmm. He got the cost of living crisis right. The, yeah, that is true. He got yeah. the price. Back then, mm -hmm. when did Nostradamus exist? If he's if he's called the cost of living crisis, fucking hats off to you, mate. Yeah. He lived. He was in fifteen fifty five. That's 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 ages ago. I didn't see the cost of living crisis coming, and I've, I'm living. <laughs> this guy is wildly. That's some impressive like, predictions. That he's yeah. gone. Cost of living crisis. And the food price price of food is going to go up and we're all going to be eating each other the food's not going to run out if i'm getting a frozen calzone delivered through my letterbox we're not at the point where food is running out yeah we've got a lot more food in the world he predicted a disaster on mars okay all right did they what? even know mars existed at that time i think they might have <sighs> tell you what he's ahead of his time galileo discovered mars in 1610 and Nostradamus in 1555 is predicting a disaster on Mars. Hold on a minute. Okay. Something's not adding up here. But what he did say was a celestial crisis. He's, he's like, he likes the word celestial fire. Uh, it's like he got one of those words on like the word of the day calendar. And it's just like, oh, I'm going to have the celestial fire. But celestial fire with the lights of Mars will go out. Hmm. Okay. So this is, you, you heard it here first on the brown jewels. What's going to happen a meteor fingers crossed a meteor is going to hit buckingham palace let's pray for that one mm -hmm. cannibalism will come because of food's going to cost too much and there's going to be a fire on mars <sighs> that's depressing isn't it <laughs> I, feel, I feel worse this is a comedy podcast right? i know it is but i like to just fucking bring some realism to the party so we're going to make some predictions now mm -hmm. about the future of this podcast but it's mainly going to focus around the podcast guests right mm -hmm. now live in the podcast we're going to take some big swings and we're going to try and see who we can get on this podcast. Give you an idea of who I've tried to get on. Genuinely, I have messaged uh, Sarah Silverman. Didn't even... Let's just see if Sarah Silverman has read that message. All right, so I tried. I messaged Sarah Silverman. She has not read the message yet. I tried Questlove, mm. the drummer from Ro The Roots. I fucking love Questlove. Mm. Uh, tried him. Tried Billy Boyd my lookalike yeah uh, the, the hobbit guy i tried him because he he's scottish isn't he yeah, he yeah fucking, he's probably just around here somewhere he fucking pied me Coben. he pied me he didn't even open the message right yeah, it's, it's gonna work it's gonna work right let's take some swings Coben. yeah based on that we've not we've not discussed this at all throw me a name i'll message him right now uh ooh, a, a name just out of nowhere um uh, uh, uh prince andrew <laughs> if you're, that'll get some attention for this podcast. Well, that will blow up this podcast. Although I'd just like to say this podcast does not support nonsery. Nope. So we're not going to get any nonsense on this podcast. Yep, none. How about a more doable? Okay. Uh, well, the one I was going to say is, did you know Bill Murray has a one eight hundred number? Does he? Yeah, he doesn't have an agent or anything, so there's just a number you can call. Have you got the number? Yeah. So, right, fuck it let's phone bill murray yeah and it's public information so i'm not even gonna believe it out okay what's uh, the it's, number it's 1-800 yeah 1298 didn't he just get accused of something recently ah shit he did didn't he fuck you bill murray fuck you bill murray oh god yeah he did something i did i think he did something pretty bad recently so we're not gonna get yep random celebrities george clooney george clooney right yeah. I, I really like george clooney mm -hmm. right hold on if george clooney <laughs> right how do we get in touch how can i get in touch with george clooney what is your, george clooney's phone number is not it's online there's a oh, phone fuck. number for george clooney here you think it's the real one only one way to find out 
only one way to find out, Corbin. This is the mentality we've got on this podcast. <laughs> George Clooney, agent management. Smokehouse pictures. Right. This is apparently George Clooney's phone. The call has been forwarded to the voicemail for Smokehouse pictures. No one is available to take your call. At the tone, please record I'm your message. Mute. When you've finished recording, you may hang up or press the pound key for more options. George, you absolute stud. This is Ralph Brown called from the Brown Jewels podcast. Uh, looking for some guests this year. If you'd like to give me a call back, oh, I can't even give my number without giving it out on the podcast. Oh, you can bleep it later. We'll bleep it out. So, George, right, get a pen and paper. Fucking stud. Plus <laughs> four four. Phone me back. I don't know if no. What is Smokehouse Pictures? I feel like we've just re started recording a voicemail for something. D do they make follow Ralph Brown comedy on Instagram or Facebook? <laughs> <laughs> Subscribe to my YouTube channel. <laughs> Watch the podcast. I don't feel that like this is going to work. I feel like I've just phoned the number for no reason. George, if you do get this, uh, I'm a big fan. Uh, I'd love to have you on the podcast sometime soon. Call me back, bro. Bye bye. Have a good year. Bye bye. Right, let's, That'll let's, work let's a thousand have, percent. Let's have some other swings. Let's go for it. Uh, I was going to say we should find a British celebrity. Yeah, let's um, make them more accessible. Yeah, yeah. Someone who's probably uh, nearby. Um,. What's Stormzy up to? Stormzy? Stormzy. I like Stormzy. Right, let's see if Stormzy... Oh, here we go. There's actually... <laughs> From the uh, website Mumsnet. <laughs> Stormzy's number's on there. I think he's with WMG. Try phoning this number and ask for Stormzy's management assistance email address. Uh, if they ask what it's about, say it's a charity request and they probably won't ask questions. Is this, this a charity? Is charity? It feels like it feels like it is, is a charity. Is this currently a non-profit? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> then, uh, yeah, there we go. That answers that, doesn't it? Come from a non-profit, the Brown Jewels. <laughs> um, right, hold on. Let's see if so. Do, is is there a number there? Yeah. Right. What's the number? Uh, zero two zero seven. Let's fucking go for it. Good afternoon, morning music. Hi, good afternoon. I'm looking to speak to uh, Stormzy's management, please. I'm calling from a non-profit. Um, I can't pass you over unless you have a full name of someone, unfortunately. That's just my privacy policy here as a receptionist. Uh -huh. I John, think we can get a name. John Williamson. Hey, hey, sorry, who are you looking for? John Williamson. John Williamson, okay. Let me just check he's in the phone list. Thank you. You could use Stormzy's full name, which is... John my... Williamson, did you say? Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, that's not in my phone list. Damn it. Is, is, are you able to give out the names or just... And then I can just try and phone them back at another time? The the only thing I can do is give you our email address. That'd and be you can um, address it to him at like as a full name and then we can forward it over. Sweet, yeah, let's do that. What's the email? Relevant. What's the email address? Yep. Brilliant. Thank you very much. I'll drop them an email. No worries. Okay, cheers. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Right. Sw I'd, swing I'd say and a miss. success. Oh, no. John Williamson. I can't believe that was... I talked about doing fake names on this podcast before, and John Williamson was the first thing I could fucking come up with. Well, I had Stormzy's full name. They're like, can we ask who you're asking for? Yeah, Michael Ebenezer Kwajo Amari Owu Jr. Fuck me. That's a very cool name. I've got fucking... That's fucking hard. Why isn't that his rap name? Right, okay, let's go for... Let's take one more swing. Let's try and phone Questlove. I actually... Yeah. Want, let's try, I want to get Questlove on. Oh. How do, can I contact Questlove? There's the number. Questlove. There's yeah. a number. Give him, give him a shout. What's the worst they could say? Well, let's find out his real name before we do this. Questlove's... Amir Khalib Thompson. Right, okay. Just in case they throw that out. Contact... There's, there's a fucking phone number here. Can we Send just do it? it? Yeah, why not? Let's go for it. If Questlove answers the fucking phone. Right, here we go. I don't even know what I'm going to say. Look at me at the beginning of this thing being like, the worst thing you can do is a phone call. Hello? Yeah, what's up? Oh, wait, okay. Turn on the music! Hello? Ah, uh, you thought it was real. No, it's the answer machine. God, uh, God. Just, well, no, don't leave a message. Text me, then I'll see it. Sorry, I have to do this. <laughs> Fuck, uh, that fucking was good. I literally, like, I shat my pants here a little bit that Questlove had just answered the phone. 
I honestly like I don't know if you saw it in my eyes. I'm we'll probably yeah. able to look back. I thought he just answered I froze. <laughs> oh man. If that had been the real guy, I would have been sitting here with my pants filled and yeah. not been able to say anything of sense. Jesus. I was man. not prepared for that. He had me there as well too, which makes makes me feel a little stupid, but <laughs> imagine oh. imagine if he did. I'm going to text yeah. him. He's just like, actually, my phone number's out there. Just everyone thinks it's not real, so I don't. He's got an email address here, right? I'm going to I'm going to email this guy. Yeah. I fucking love him. I want to say, Coben, I fucking fully shat my pants, yeah? <laughs> and at the start of this oh, podcast, yeah. I was, what, what did I, at the start of this podcast, I said mm. the worst thing you can do is phone someone out of the blue and we've now come full circle and now mm. tried to fucking phone people. <laughs> Hey, uh, new new year, new new podcast. New year. Format changes. Right, I've got, I've, he's got an email address here and it seems to be legit. So I'm mm-hmm. going to email. I will keep you posted on this. Mm-hmm. <sighs> My heart is going so fast. <laughs> fully, oh, fully crapped it. I'm shook. I'm shook. Oh, yeah. Holy shit, right. I'll tell you what, leave it there. I'm honest to God, I can never, I should never do this again live in the pod. If you answered, I'm, <laughs> I'm such a big fan. <laughs> Oh, well, I'll tell you what, that's the end of the pod for you today. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much for Colbin for being in the studio today. Much appreciate Colbin. Um, thank you for And there will be guests back as of next week. Um, but uh, as always, go and follow the podcast. Give it a like. Give it a review as well. That would be lovely. Thank you very much for doing that. Goodbye.